Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Chat Inspect uh, session. Uh, we are joined by Joshua today. Uh, he will run us through Chat Inspect and Compliance as well. Um, it's a sunny afternoon in London, and we have uh, quite a few um, participants from around the world. So, welcome, guys. Great to have you here. So I want to run through some uh, rules of engagement and are welcome to you all. Uh, if you are not familiar with Open Security Summit, uh, this is the first time we're doing training sessions, training weeks on Summit. So Summit usually takes place one week and on site, but this year everything has gone virtual thanks to COVID. And we have had the flexibility to add some training sessions before the Summit so that we all learn from each other and we become more comfortable with the topics. So when we are uh, at the summit, we can talk more confidently and we all have some that familiarity with each other as well. So in this session, please focus on the session and please, uh, Joshua is self-taught on the subject. So it takes a lot of courage and uh, love for the community to uh, step up and deliver a session so big congratulations to him firstly um, this is practitioner led so Joshua will run us through uh, the topics and the lab um, um, I'm, I want to talk about a bit of our values so this is as the name suggests it is open security summit so we it is openness is quite important for us so uh, we share the stuff and everything is recorded and shared afterwards on our YouTube channel on our websites so um, feel free to share what you want to share and feel free to contribute even if you are new to the subject it doesn't mean you won't have a valuable opinion on it so uh, please please uh, speak up don't be shy no one's gonna judge you uh, and there are no stupid questions. Uh, participation is key. Um, we obviously we respect each other. Otherwise, we we have zero tolerance for disrespectful behavior. Um, and as I said, everything will be recorded. We are recording right now, and we, this will go on to YouTube and um, social media channels as well. If you don't want to be identified, you can rename yourselves as NA and. Um, take that precaution for yourself um, so we already talked about respect as well uh, today we're gonna use all the functionalities of zoom so there is a chat channel on zoom uh, please feel free to uh, pose your questions or chat in that channel you can also unmute yourself when you have a question and ask directly to Joshua uh, he is open to that uh, and I will be monitoring the chat channel um, so, yeah, and uh, join our Slack and do posts on social media. We love visibility. The more visibility, the more people we get to our community and we progress all together. I am ready to hand back to Joshua. Joshua, would you be ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am so, my share, so you can uh, take over. Yeah, just give me a minute. No problem. I have just posted the Slack uh, invite for you guys, and our hashtag for the event is OSS2020. Please make sure you add the hashtag uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn so that we have. Um, a nice place to look back and enjoy. So while we wait for Joshua, does anybody have any comments on uh, compliance as code? Do you guys have any experience in it? Or are you, like me, are you complete beginners? You can unmute and talk. Right. Some experience with Inspect as well, uh, and OPI uh, lately been trying to 
Pentru că ar open policy agent. Yeah. Can I start now? Okay, you can share your screen. Yeah, I will share my screen. Yeah, can you able to see? Yes, we can see the screen. And you need to speak into the microphone. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> it's it's audible now. That is that is very good. Yeah. So good am good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who are attending my session. Thanks for attending my session. So today I will be taking the um, sessions on compliance as code using the inspect tool. So how I planned the session was we will go through the theory in slides. After that I will share the uh, Gitbook link where we can do some of the inspect like creating the um, creating the profiles for your compliance and how we can go further like that I have all shared that one so feel free to ask question if you have any doubt yeah so this is like a small intro about me I'm Joshua Jabraj I'm currently studying my under graduation in, uh, in Chennai, Chennai India so I am pretty much interested about like a web Android and at security and also I am currently also learning about the DevSecOps things and also I am currently looking for like a, any internship like remote internship if you are open to anything please let me know thanks so we will go with like a problem with a traditional compliance so let's begin with the story so he is a John meet Mr. John okay hey he is he, he is running the uh, company for selling the toilet papers so due to the covid thing the the sales of the toilet paper has increased so he had to make the make some changes in this website in order to make uh, some changes in the website previously he was following like a waterfall model where it's it takes around like a six months or ten months or minimum three months to deploy the code so instead of instead of doing like a uh, waterfall model he, he plans to move to the uh, plans to move to the um, agile agile uh, agile model where he can deploy the code more frequently and add the features more frequently so when they when they move to the uh, when they move to the agile model there will be some of the there will be problem of uh, confusion between the developer and the operation team but the pro the problem with developer is they want to push the code to the production as as far as the as soon as i wrote the code the the problem with the operation team is they want the code to be stable they don't want the code that that is not good going into the productions so there will be confusion between the developer and the operation team so in order to solve the problem some of the experts in our industry are came to the came to the solution called devops so in devops in devops the developer and the operation people will work together and the, there is the miscommunication between the developer and the operation team has been resolved yeah now now the developer who writing the code are pushing into the prod prod uh, environment and due to the devops things there will be no problem in the infrastructure but this time they couldn't able to push the code to the production they they are again facing some issues this time there is a problem between the developer and the security compliance team the developer says i want to push the code to the production as soon as i wrote as soon as I wrote and all the test cases are passed but the compliance people are, are telling like i want to push the i will i will only allow to the push i will only allow to push the code only when you when you when you uh, Will the, uh, when you meet the requirement of the compliance team so so the problem is the problem with the developers is mm, as the as the most people as the most developer they don't want to uh, learn the more uh, learn the new steps uh, uh, like out of their interest like they don't want to need to develop uh, like a devops work or compliance works what the what the compliance team asked was they asked to do like a uh, they ask to do they will simply give the list of spreadsheets which the developer uh, don't uh, don't understand 
uh, and ask them hey hey meet this compliance requirements um, uh, then we will uh, then we will allow the push push uh, push your code into the production so the developer doesn't want to the developer doesn't want learn learn new thing so there will be some of the conflicts between the development team and the compliance team to solve these problems uh, we have come with the concept called compliance as code in compliance as code we we don't we don't usually push we don't usually write the compliance as the, like a spreadsheet or something uh, spreadsheet or checklist or like that in compliance as code we will uh, wrote the we will write the rules in form of the um, form of the code so that everyone in the team can understand not not like a traditional model where only the compliance people will understand the uh, code or developer has to put some time to try to understand what the compliance team has doing uh, in compliance as code like everyone can do uh, everyone can have, like uh, uh, everyone in the team has can be able to understand the code so uh, some of the problem is some people consider like a, i can automate the compliance as code using the bash script but it's uh, but it's not the compliance as code you can write like a bash script but it's not like a scalable for example you are using the checking using apt app module for checking uh, like audit audit tool is, is installed for compliance but it doesn't work with the windows machine or uh like any other flavor of the linux machine like a, a centos or any other thing, alpine model it doesn't work on these things so don't confuse like a, you you have done automation like using the bash script i have achieved the compliance as code yeah so today we are going to see as how we can achieve the compliance as code using the open source tools open source tool called inspect um, so the inspect can be used for like uh, we can use the test for uh, your security and also for compliance but today we are going to see only about the uh, compliance part so we, you, you can ask the question like we have like so much so much of tools why should we go for compliance why should we go for inspect so the main advantage i found when i learning about the inspect is it's a human readable language you can uh, you can uh, it's it all does are supported by the dsl uh, which was which was created by the chef which is easy to read like you you, you don't need even uh, ruby to understand the inspect code it's as simple as that and also it is easy to integ integrate so inspect provide using the cli so it can be in installed installed on the, any workspace like you are working on either you are working on cloud or any or uh, a local machine or you are working on a windows machine or linux machine or mac machine it's uh, it can be easily integrated into any also environment and also it supports like a different environment let's say uh, uh, it supports like a windows 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 targets windows target linux target and uh, and the cloud targets like the aws instance we can check for the aws instance compliance and uh, recently uh, inspect also supporting the docker thing uh, and another benefit that the inspect provided was there is no dependency for uh, some tools some tools uh, required uh, like uh, if suppose we are taking the uh, aws instance for well, the only thing that we need to record is there is some connection between our our host machine and the aws machine which we can easily achieve by ssh so there is no tools that need to be installed on the target machine so this is how this is why this is one of the main feature of the inspect so what what inspect can do since we are doing all the things as code it speed up the deployment so we are not uh, putting the gates on the developer like uh, developer uh, since we are using the code we can easily scale and we, we can easily change the code and we can easily check for compliance and also it reduce the workload uh, we can reuse the code which can be shared with other teams or we can use the existing code for the compliance so uh, there will be there will be no thing like we are uh, creating everything from a scratch and also inspect helps to convert the existing compliance into the uh, traditional compliance spreadsheets or checklist can be converted into the code using the inspect easily and also you will gain the uh, like you will become more friendly with the developer as we don't stop them for putting their code into the 
deployment so these are the things that what inspect cannot do uh, so uh, running the inspect code doesn't make you 100% compliance so if you are thinking i i run the inspect check on the uh, machine now i am 100% compliant no it doesn't makes you 100% compliant so one the thing that inspect can do is it can check for the compliance and tells whether you are compliant or not it doesn't make you 100% compliant um, and also it doesn't make you 100% secure so you are like a, you are like some running some test or baseline scan or some docker csa benchmark scans on that and it doesn't make sure that you are when you satisfy the requirement it doesn't make sure you are not 100% secure we could see that some of the breaches are happening in the and the companies that they do follow the compliance also and another thing that the uh, inspect cannot do us it cannot make sense let's take uh, 10 to the system if it is not compliant let's take the example if the we are running the ssh compliance so where uh, where it's compliance as it, the inspect has found some of the some of the thing that is not uh, following the complaints it cannot make the change it can only able to tell it's uh, 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 that there is some error in the there is uh, that is something that is not following the compliance like that it can be sure yeah so this is about the theory part we will move to the hands on now microphone Joshua yeah, yeah so I have completed with the theory part we will move to the hands on okay what do you need us to do yeah it will be shared in the slack uh, if you are if you want to do uh, if you want to do answer along with me okay uh, if you share uh, i'm going to follow these are the things that we have already covered in the slides so this is the very personalized that we have to have like a basic uh, linux commands like uh, uh, ls or make directory as the command and also we have like a if you have what with the compliance then it's good and if you are having to uh, if you are having some things to learn it's also good and yeah so these are the intended intended audience and this what we cannot expect from the out of the course like we cannot be able to do the watching the compliance and also you cannot you should not you should not think like after this uh, after this complaint compliance workshop i would be able to uh, put the same code into the production you have to make some changes according to the compliance that you are following in the companies or in your organization uh, based on that we have to put this so we will start with the inspection so uh, uh, basically inspection is like a python cell that that we are uh, that we get when we run the inspect command inspect inspect cell command so uh, this is the good place where we can start writing our compliance compliance code i will show i will show in the demo so i will just open the inspect cell uh, so just give me So can you or Josh, can you give us a brief overview of what this platform is? Well, what are we seeing? Is this a machine? Is this, what is it? So basically it's like an online ID where we can easily collaborate with each other. So, uh, so the people who have sent the email will have to access like the same workspace that I'm currently working on. So that we can see the, see the other code, or I can help with them, like if they are facing some issues. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I will go with like an inspection command. So I'm just give me.
Um, so Cloud9 itself is a um, it's an EC2 instance running in the background. Essentially, it's a full-fat uh, Ubuntu machine in this case. Um, it does default to Amazon Linux, um, the CentOS fork, if you don't specify to use Ubuntu. Um, so it is essentially just an IDE to an SSH server in this case. Um, it doesn't have to run on a... EC2 instance, you can set an SSH server up anywhere in the world and point your Cloud9 instance at that server and then use Cloud9 as your IDE for various environments, including Python, Node, JavaScript, etc. It's all built in. So I, I, I have run the inspector, okay. So it's giving me about like a, uh, currently giving the information about like. Uh, the machine, the EC2 that I'm running. If you are running on the host machine, it will show that like uh, which host you are running. You are running on a Mac or Windows or something like that. I'll just type the help command to see what are the options are there. You could see it's list about the list of options that uh, that can be used inside the inspector. It's like similar to like a Python cell, it is, but it's specifically made for a uh, inspection. And, uh, Ruby commands also work on, uh, inside the uh, inspection. Okay. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So uh, we will try to look at the resources. We are uh, we are going to. I will I will explain more about the resources in, in the upcoming slides. Upcoming pages. You just uh, think, think like a resource as a file, okay? So I'm typing like a in help resources so these are the resources that are available for the inspect okay we can think like a resources like like a file or something which we can ask the question about for example i'm going to ask uh, which uh, on which uh, which which OS I am currently running? Okay. So I am just asking OS and specify the uh, family. So it's telling that I am currently running as a DBN family. You can you can find more about the resources like typing help and the resource name. So it's it shows the diff uh, different options like. Uh, what are the options that can be used with the uh, resources? Like in the OS case, we are seeing like a, uh, we can ask the question about the families, or we can ask like a question, it is Red Hat, or it is based on the Windows, or it is based on the Linux, or like that we can ask question. So another command that, uh, another, another useful thing was, there is some resource like a command, where we can uh, execute the command like a shell. So this is the command that we are pushing. We can put the initial command inside this this one, and we are printing using the std out. So, for example, I'm using inspect. So I'm just printing the date. No inspect log. Command. You could see, right? It's same the output that we get when we run on the cell. I'll show you in the another, another type of. So when I type date, you can see we are getting like a same output using this SDR. Uh, so everyone has uh, done with the setup of creating the this thing. Hello? Hello, can you able to hear me? Um, sorry, uh, we're just in the process of doing that. I've just sent the credentials to everyone. 
Um, I need to set a post a link where everyone should follow to log into Amazon AWS. Um, and then Josh at the same time is creating access to Cloud9 for everyone as well. So we are kind of trying to multitask and we are trying, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, takes take some bra, takes some time. So basically, I planned out some of the tasks for you, which we can do like uh, in the end of the sessions. So we you can do it in your own. Time. So there are some commands, some command like uh, I'll get out of the cell. Inspect also offers uh, some of the command tools along with the uh, inspect cell. Like we can put inspect detect. Microphone gesture. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like inspect it, it's it helps to give the give the basic information about the uh, about the uh, host ta target that we are running. So the basic use case of this inspect direct is suppose we are doing SSH on the server. Uh, we want to make sure that the uh, server is reachable. Uh, our SSH configuration is correct. Correct. So during that time, we will use inspect direct command. So there is also some. Oh, funny command in inspect, inspect, nothing. So it's basically tell you did that thing. That, that is so funny. Yeah. So, so, what, so what types of uh, things we would check with uh, inspect? So basically, we we can do uh, all the things that uh, uh, inspect resource provides. Uh, just give me a minute, I'll show. So these are the resources that we can ask the question uh, check for using the inspect. Like if you take if you click OS, you can see you can ask about the bash or like. Docker or gem or HTTP. Like if you are running in the Ubuntu based machine, you can use the app module to get check for what are the modules that are installed. If you are running on the AWS, you could see that uh, what are the configuration that the AWS has, what are the volumes that has. So this will be using like if you are if you are uh, doing a cloud compliance, it, this and all this resource will be using. So the, the it's also support the uh, Azure and GCP and this one I'm not sure how. So we will start liking. We will start with the uh, writing our as the traditional development. We are starting with writing the uh, hello world program. So I am just in this in this command. I am just uh, I just clear out the. So I am uh, just echo. I am just saving this output into the file called conference. Okay. So, if I look into the file conference, you could see open circuit, open uh, security summit is a good conference. You, are, you could see that, right? So, we are going to check whether it's correctly inside or not. So, yeah. so now I have uh, the AWS management console in front of me. Uh, I guess uh, other participants also uh, could be here. So what do we do now? So once you've logged in, there is a uh, link that Petra's just posted in the Zoom chat. Uh, so once you're logged in, if you click that link, it will take you to the Cloud9 um, page with the shared environments. And um, there should be one there which says inspect lab shared. And uh, then you can use that. Yeah, Josh, can, uh, can we able to share your screen and show that once so that everyone can able to understand? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'll stop sharing my screen and can you? Okay. I'm making you co-host, Josh. Cool. So, um, can you see my screen? Yes. yes cool. Um, so, if we go back to the home page quickly, in here, if you just search for Cloud9, then for me, it's my environment as I created it. But if you click on shared with you, then it will appear just in there. Then when you click on that, it will open this window. And I can see a few of you already in there. 
I, I'm in. True. Okay, we can go, right? So, uh, I advise you to create this team uh, I'll share the screen. So, everyone was here, right? Yes. So, can you just uh, type this command inspect iPhone iPhone version to make sure that you, you are installing inside? Yes, I'm with you. Yeah. So, can you help me out by creating the new, fold, new folder with your names? So that you are not disturbing any other any other output. Right. I am waiting for the another from me. Yeah, okay. Can you go inside the folder? So so that uh, you are working on the you just type the print working directly. So make sure that you are inside your lab, okay? So we are going to perform the first task. So as I already explained instruction where we can we just type yes for this one. As I explained instruction where we can like uh, write our before writing our code, we can export the features that the inspect has. So if you if you go to the inspect shell, uh, I have created one task for like you have to uh, use the inspect shell. Uh, to find out the which platform you are basically you are in. So it should print out like if you are if you are typing like OS OS family. Uh, you could see I am getting Debian as the output, right? If you you should find out the command which print out the uh, platform of the Current machine you are running. You should you should ideally if you are running on the uh, cloud nine, you should be able to get uh, output like a uh, um, Ubuntu Ubuntu eight no four. But you should not use the command resource. You should find another resource which print out the Ubuntu. Uh, if anyone able to. Do that, please put the, uh, put the answer in the chat window. I got where you got so far on the screen, and it gave me the uh, same uh, response. If anyone has facing any issues, please let me know so that I can help with you. Feel free to ask me in chat. Or yeah, and I get the same response for the inspect detect as Ramesh did. You are getting same error. So the inspect detect uh, command doesn't work somehow. Yeah, I. I you, so the thing is, you should not put the inspect direct inside inside the inspect shell. You have to put the inspect shell direct outside of the like ordinary ordinary terminal. Can you please open the other terminal and put inspect direct? You could see the output like. Okay. We are currently inside the inspect shell, not the bash shell that we are running the. I see. So inspect direct. Yep. No, so. Yeah, so you should get this is not the solution. You should find the output inside the uh, inspection. You are getting point, you are getting right. Hello, hi. Yeah, sure, take some time. If uh, anyone have, uh, able to figure out, please let me know in the chat. Yeah, raise or, hands. Or, yeah. If you have finished. Yeah. Use some sort of... Um, resources. We can find out the list of resources using help. Resources. If you want to know about any of the resources, you, you just simply type help. Uh, 
resources that resources name sorry sorry hold that resource name you will get the list of options hello i'm here we will uh, yeah we will take like a couple of minutes if ever, if anyone has anyone able to figure out we will discuss or else we can move to the next task i will discuss the solutions once we finish the session at so the end of the session task are we doing are we still on task 1 because i think yeah task 1 yeah 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 okay okay if, uh, if if no one able to figure out no issues we can continue with the, we we will do it in the final so just exit out of the inspector using the so we are we are going with uh, writing a typical hello world program using the inspector so ignore this ignore this command just copy this command and make sure you are currently on this uh, in the name directory and uh, paste this command so our basic directory or yeah our own directory right yeah 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 on your name so ideally you should be able to get like this one this thing. yeah you should be able to get like this one under your name Yeah, okay so basically uh, we are uh, putting the creating the file conference and adding the content like open security summit is a good conference okay so i'll just print the content using that command you could see it's the so Let's try to understand the what are the inspect uh, inspect inspect scripts are made up of inspect script are made up of basically a two component. So basically, it's kind of it's consists of resources. So as we have seen, like a resources, you can think like a anything like if you are want to check about the uh, files or configurations or uh, uh, or uh, or the state or which we want to. check basically it's the thing that we want to test for compliance so matcher so as the name suggests you can think like a matcher is the test cases uh, like we want to uh, test the uh, configuration with the our uh, test cases so basically it's like a input that we are doing for the test cases so the typical uh, test look like you are describe describe is the keyword that used by the dsl uh, and resources name the resources can be like a, anything like a file name file or os or ss ss or anything so we, we basically 
takes the resources and put under the uh, set of test cases and checking it is whether it is correct or not so i also want to mention the other things there is something called it and its so the basic difference between the it and its is it refers to the resource itself it refers to the resource attributes uh, I will, I will just explain this resource with a simple example. For example, if you are using the resource as a file, it refers to the file itself. It refers, refers to its IPS, it refers to the uh, attributes like a file size, file permission, or the content of the file, or something like that. Okay, so uh, we are going to write our first script. So basically, we are going to take the resources as a conference. And, and check whether the file is uh, present or there uh, and we, we are checking its content it is it is equal to the awesome conference okay so basically good one yeah so basically we are going to uh, yeah just uh, so you have to create the new folder under your uh, name Okay. Yeah, just create the file under the name. Mm -hmm. Copy paste this one. Yeah. And oh. make sure it's uh, it's uh, inside our uh, the same uh, same uh, directory where we have created the conference file. Click save and. Type ls to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we have to save in the dot rb uh, extension. It's it's written it's written it's it's written in the ruby ruby format. So that we have to save in the dot r rb. RB. So are we at, at in our folder or are we in the document in the file? What you are asking, I'm I'm not getting. So um. I copied uh, from your. Uh, I copied yeah. the same thing, but I yeah, didn't you, paste it in a file. So do I need to create a new file? Yeah, you should create a file uh, ending with a dot rb ruby extension. Cool. I just yeah. close this one because I'm confusing with the time. I just named this as test. Yeah, you, you, you should see the two files, like one with the test folder and another is the uh, test things that you want to. Nida, I think you, you are not saved in the dot rb format. I know. I was trying to do it as you did. You just type nano and the file name dot rb extension. I'm updating the content. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, I need help. So am I supposed to do everything from the terminal window? No, no, you can use the GUI. I'm, I'm, I'm compatible with the terminal, so I just use that one. You can just create this one. Like, uh, new file and copy paste this thing. 
copy this and make sure you are save, saving it dot rb extension in, and inside your uh, directory I think you have said yeah. No, I think you have saved in the wrong wrong place. Like you should save inside the GitHub directory. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, we are now trying to execute the script. We can simply write this command: inspect execute and the file name. Uh, inspect execute and the file name that you are wrote the text script. You should see the you should see you should see right, right? You should you should be able to see it able to successfully pass the one test and the success uh, and it failed in one uh, one test because the content it's looking for was awesome problems but it's showing like it's the content present of good conference okay just we will open the conference file and just that i see the same uh, yeah you have to change into the awesome conference mm. so once i once again run the test we are able to see we are getting two successful So it didn't. It failed because it didn't match. Yeah. Okay. So that was what our script was checking. Yeah, that's the content it. of the file. Cool. Yeah. So basically, it's checking its content should be match equal to the open security should be an awesome conference. But the content that we are present previously present was good content. Yay! Two successfuls. Yeah. Okay. You are able to do that. So uh, I'll go with next one. Yeah, this is how we have done. Uh, so you should get like uh, this output. Uh, we will discuss about the profiles and that and the other things that we are in the next in the next upcoming slides. So this is the task that we have to run. Uh, we will do the task in the end of the workshop so that everyone will be able to do. So if someone else is not able to do the thing, we not done with the setup, they can do in the meantime. So we will we'll skip this task and do in the end. Okay, is it okay for everyone? Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. We will skip the task and do it in the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we will move on to the next thing called uh, controls. Inspect controls. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we we have we have write like a code like uh, test or draw or b, but it's not like a professional professional thing, right? We cannot put this code into the production or if someone was reading into reading in the reading our code they can't be able to understand right for that we are going to use something called controls so the control helps to encapsulate our test into into the uh, block blocks so that everyone can be able to read the uh, file so we are just uh, just create uh, another file called control.rb and copy this one I'll just create. So again, we're doing a new file, yeah. pasting the content in. I'll just you just name it as control dot rb. Control dot rb.
Yeah, you could see, right? Hello? Yes. Yes, just give me a minute, Arjun, please. I'll go with this one under there, it's fine. So basically in control, this is the ID that we are doing for control. So that if you are if you are having like a multiple controls, we can easily identify this one. And so this is this is the impact. Like if you are doing the compliance, you, you should you should specify that impact. Like this is very severe impact, it should be done uh, immediately. It should be, we should not uh, do the, uh, uh, we should not push the code production with the uh, impact, like a uh, more impact. So we are specifying the impact here. And title, this is the title that we are going to create, the, that we are going to give for the test. And also the description is the option description that we are going to uh, create, that we are going to give for the control. So it is like more. It's, you can you can find that it is more easy to read, right? Compared to this one. If you, if anyone was reading this one, uh, ignore the commands. If anyone was able to read, uh, if I read read this one, they can't be able to understand what we are what they are actually doing. If you if you put under the control and give some description, they are easily able to read, right? Um, understand, right? So that so that only we are going to move. Over. We are moving, to, we are using the control. So your control is basically like a professional way of writing the test. So if you are using somewhere in the company's organization, they they expect they expect you that, to that uh, you have to be more professional and everyone in the team should be able to read. So this control gives the feature that everyone can be able to read. So we are moving to the exploring the infect components. So the inspect component, uh, the first component that we are going to uh, see was inspect targets. So the targets is nothing but the thing that we want to check. Let's take you want to check the pro production server that running on the uh, running running your code. You can use that. That is the target for us for compliance. So the inspect provide different type of target, local target. So the local target is we know that we are running the test locally on our machine. So we are we have done the test right. That is currently it's, uh, uh, refers to the local and the remote. So we can use the SSH configuration. SSH uh, like we can uh, test using the SSH the machine, the server, or the EC2 machines or anything that is running on the cloud. And also we can test the Docker. Uh, Docker container and and the uh, uh, IFNT flag is used to check for the uh, IFNT flag is used to set the target of the input, uh, the target that we want to check for the compliance. So this is about the target that uh, that the inspect offers. So inspect control sources. So we are we can get the it is not. A, a, it is not uh, productive or a good way to write everything from scratch. We will get tired or we will get sometimes we will get bored. People like him get bored. So we are going to use something called control sources. So the local, we are, uh, inspect uh, offers different type of local sources, control sources. For example, local. In the local, uh, we are executing the test script that are currently present in the uh, machine for uh, the test dot rb or control dot rb are there some of the examples that uh, we wrote right and the uh, profile uh, we will discuss more about the profile and remote or remote url so remote uh, remote url helps to uh, helps to fetch the code from the remote repository that uh, present there um, and we can execute the script uh, so uh, there is something called the supermarket present in the in the in the check inspect where the people are written the compliance code. We can simply use the supermarket to get the code 
and we can run the test result. And also, if you are running marketplace, yeah, yeah, it's like a marketplace where people are already written and contributed there. So there is something called compliance. So in uh, some of the place like a uh, place like uh, uh, in banks or some important place like a uh, medicals or things, they have uh, like a, they have a own own compliance. In that case, they run like a compliance server where they have a script. Self compliance server we can fetch from this one. So we are going to see the what are the profiles that the inspector offers. So I will go to the demo. You can see these are the these are the uh, profiles that are uh, available in the supermarket. So we can get use of these profiles. I will show how we can use this one. Uh, so for to get the more information like what it does, you can just use this command. Inspect supermarket, supermarket info and the name of the profile. You just copy this one. You could see it's like a, it's giving the description about the uh, profile that the, the, the test script that we are running. Uh, uh, so we can we can execute using inspect supermarket execute and the profile name. So I am not do, I am not doing now because it takes some time to download and run the all the test. So I am just skipping this one. We can do if you if you have time then we can do right run, run the profile from the supermarket. Yeah. So this is the most important thing that we have that the inspect feature has. It's like an inspect profile. So inspect, inspect profile is like a uh, you can think like a product where we can put the test all the tests inside our the code so that uh, it can be easily trans it can be easily shared with other people. Or if you, are, you can upload in the GitHub, or uh, you can share with other people, and you can put it on like a supermarket. So it's more like a more like arranging the script inside the inside the one place. More controls. So I will go there. To create the Inspect profile, you just have to inspect in profile the profile name that we are uh, going to use. I just I just name it as test profile. Please uh, yeah, I will also do this one. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hello, Dida. I'm waiting for. Oh. Okay. I didn't realize we were doing the task as well. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I just execute this command. So I'll explain this. This the files that are present here. So the readme dot is uh, it's telling about the profile that we are going to write. So it's uh, so uh, who are go if everyone uh, if anyone going to use it's it's more like a GitHub GitHub readme GitHub readme file. So the inspect inspect dot yaml file is uh, where we are specifying the metadata of our uh, profile. Like uh, if we go inside this one, yeah. You could see, right? Uh, we are we. Can you able to see, or do I need to increase the font? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, can you able to see my screen, or do I need to increase? 
No, no, I'll we, just... I see. I can see, but yeah. I'll just increase. Yeah, it's like more about the like metadata. Metadata that uh, present there. We can associate the profile name, title, and author, and more things are there. And in the, in the under the controls, we can put the action test that we want to run. This is the place where we put our test kit. Yeah. So uh, we will. Um, So uh, before executing the profile, we have to do inspect, uh, check profile name. In my example, I am using the test profile. You could see right, no warning or uh, no error. So this this makes us that we are, we are not adding any errors in our code or like that. So we can simply execute the uh, test using inspect execute the profile name. You could see right. So now, now I explain these things. So profile tells that the profile name that we are running in our case uh, it's a test to profile and it's it's a version we are specific we didn't specify so it came from the default version 1.0 and target since we are running against our uh, local easy to instance it's showing the target as local machine so everything got clear we get two successful yeah is everyone able to follow follow me or anyone have any doubt yes i have just executed the test profile as well it's showing too successful. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we get the idea, right? So basically, we are putting the control script under the profile uh, so that uh, it will be easily shared. I will just show another thing. So we are, we are able to zip the archive of the uh, profile so that we can able to share with everyone. So we just have to type in archive and the profile name. Or in our case, test test ins, test profile and the iPhone iPhone is it. You can see right, we are able to uh, get the zip file. Now what we can do is we can be able to copy the file and share with everyone so that everyone can able to easily access the file. Sir, can you repeat the last part? What? Yeah. So after so we. Yeah. So basically, we are we are con uh, we are zipping our file so that it can be shared with a, anyone in the. A, if you want to share the profile that you wrote with anyone, you can do uh, you can do it with zip this command this one. You can zip and uh, share it with anyone. So I'm just showing the one way that we can be able to share the profile that we have created. Yeah, we will go to the next part. So, um, uh, so we are going to look at the, some of the advanced features that uh, that the profile has. Uh, so, so basically, there is something called defense. So basically, what defense does was it will fetch the existing, uh, existing the existing profile that are already present in the supermarket or compliance or same as the target that you are specific. If you are adding the, uh, something has to be checked before executing our script, we can put like a, in, in the defense in the inspect camera file. So in the example, we could see uh, we are putting the SFX baseline. To test in order to before that has to be te tested before executing the 
executing our actual script. So basically, it's like a, if you are working with a, if you are experienced, uh, you are experienced with working with programming, you can think like a inheritance. We are inheriting the properties of the existing uh, existing uh, ro roles. So we have to we have to put this one inside our uh, YAML file. I have a very stupid question. Yeah, sure. I have appended that information. How do I save the file without leaving the file? In Nano? Yeah. Control X. Control S, Control X. I'm not sure, just giving it. Okay, Control S worked. Command S. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically, what we are what we are trying to achieve was uh, execute the SSU baseline profile before executing our actual script that are present in control folder, uh, and also we have to include this one inside this uh, our control script in the in our case in the example of this script. So basically, we are telling include the uh, we we are putting we have to do do two two things we have to. Uh, put it on the YAML file and we have to put say to the uh, Ruby file to include the dependency. Uh, so before executing the uh, uh, before executing the script we have to remove the log file that that was created by executing the test profile. I'll just execute. I'll just remove so basically this file, this file will be creating uh, every time we are running that uh, profile if you are not removing this file uh, it has it, it, it consists of the metadata on the dependency that we have to, we have to run the file if, if you are not removing the file it will take the previous configuration and run the file so basically the dependency that we are uh, added it will not be reflected in our code so for that I have removed that one I'll just execute, inspect, execute, test, profile. You could see, right? The SSH, the SSH test was run uh, before, uh, before executing the, uh, our script. So this will be more useful um, when we are, uh, when we are, when we want to some of the add some features to the existing role, uh, like I must have missed, I must have missed a step because <clears throat> when I tried to execute, it says cannot load SSH baseline since it's not listed as a dependency of test profile. Yeah, I will help you. I will help you. Uh, can you check once uh, your inspect dot yaml file as this one? Mm -hmm. Let me check. I thought I did that. Yeah, I have that in the file. Yeah, so in in our inside the control folder, we have an example dot rb, right? Yes. Uh, and I, oh, no, yes. We have, to we have included control SSH baseline in there as well. Yes. Uh, uh, did you remove the this this one this steps removing the log file? No, remove, I yeah. So be, just a minute before before doing that, can you do cat on the file? Yeah, which one? Uh, test inspect, inspect log file. Inspect yeah. yeah. Inspect log file. Cat test profile. Asset. Inspect log file. You said yeah. Yeah, you, you under the dependency you, are, you 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 can't able to see anything, right? Mm. Yeah, because, because this file okay. log file version one depends hmm, nothing doesn't have yeah. any. 
yeah so basically it, it's it's a file that we are created before uh, including the dependency so what it does was uh, the input profile will look for log file in inside the dependency inside the log file it look for dependency if there is there no dependency means it will run the code so uh, you, you have to run again the remove the remove the log file log file oh, and run the can i put uh, dependencies as ssh baseline no 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 you just to no. rm okay i'll just um, rm uh, test profile input did it now run the hmm. no such file or directory what am i doing wrong i need to get into the folder i guess Cool. Now try to run. Make sure you are coming out of in the current uh, like a, like I am showing you are in inside this one environment and what. Are you able to do it? Yes, forty-three successful, fifty-eight failures. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically, we are uh, running the check in the present inside the uh, present inside the SSH base. But now, now this way we can uh, use the profile that are created by the other and add our uh, add our check inside the example dot org so that uh, our check will be tested along with the test that already present in the profile. Yeah. So there is uh, another thing called supports. Supports keyword present in the YAML file. I will just show this one. Yeah. So basic, basic on uh, based on this one, we can uh, put the thing like it should be sub. Uh, it should be run on only like a Windows machine or uh, Ubuntu machine or like uh, it should be run on Windows Seven only. We can specify the more things on. on under the inspect inspecting under the platform thing. yeah so that's all about this one we will move to the inspect security so just uh, follow the steps that i'm doing just follow this one i will explain okay. So I have a question. The example RB file we're um, updating is it the one that we used for the previous? No, no, no. One? Oh no, the no. Yeah, you, you, okay. I think you missed some step. You have to. You have created a new file, right? Yes. New profile. Yes. Uh, under that new file, you have to. Put. Yeah, ignore me. Yeah. That's all. That's all. I hope everyone was able to do this one. So I'm just executing this this one. Hmm. 
You would be able to see like this one. Yeah, it's so it, yeah, it's working. But there are some problems. Problem in this kind of hours. If you go to the example dot rv, we are directly putting the password. Password, right? Mm -hmm. We are we are we are hard coding the password, which we should not do uh, in in the real world. Yeah, in the real world, in the production environment, you cannot use, just like put the password inside this one. Uh, there are some chances it, it, it may get leaked. Sometimes, if you are working with the Amazon things, you have to put the keys. It's not the good good practice to put the key inside this one. So, so inspect as something called attribute. So, just copy paste this one. I'll explain this. So the attribute, the, the attribute takes the three parameter, the variable name and the default value and the description. So I'm just going to replace this password with pass that I have created and save it there. And uh, we have to We have to create the another fo another folder in the same directory uh, with with any name and with any name you want, but it should be uh, YAML file. It should be like a YAML file, and uh, yeah, it should be present in the same directory. So I'm going to save it as pass dot YAML. Which 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 folder? In the same directory under your name. Secure profile? No, no, no. It's under Vidar. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now when we uh, run the Profile, we have to specify the file name using the attributes uh, flag. We just have to also inspect taxi and the profile name. In our case, it is the secure profile, and we are specifying using the ATT attributes flag. I think we should rename the file to be password, right? No, um, you are a. I am not getting what you are saying. Just give me a minute. You have to. Yeah, now it's working. You could see right here. Instead of uh, putting the code directly inside the thing, we are creating a folder called fast fast or the armor. Where we are saving the password, and we are referring this one inside the uh, control dot rb example dot rb. You can see we are putting this one inside this one. We are getting right. Does everyone able to follow our? Hello. I'm not there yet. I'm. I have a failure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I created the pass YAML. Yeah. Given it the value. Um, yeah, yeah. And now do I run exec the secure profile again? Yeah, you have to one success, one failure. Ah, I think you have made some changes, so that's why you are getting failure. 
so you get the but but you are getting idea right we are not hard coding this time we are not hard coding the keys so basically we are using the other yaml file where we store the where we show the um, keys and we able to run this one yeah mm, yeah that's that that's about this one inspect security and we move to, move on to the next thing okay yeah so you could see right it is how difficult to run the right a simple script like testing uh, a file content it's very difficult and very boring yeah right so that uh, we have something called devsec hardening framework where they have they have created the profile for everything everything you name they have created the profile for example you could see these are things that we have to they have run the profile they have created the profile so for example they have created the profile for ssh or ssl docker kubernetes and the engineers apache linux windows all things so we are basically i am going in, i am interested in this one so i am going to this one you could run you could just use this one like how i am using and this giving me you can you can use the supermarket also like how i show in super ma you have a typo uh yeah we have you could see right they have the dev sec like uh, the framework we just have to uh, copy this one uh inspect cp super ma you could see right we getting the output so that so that instead of instead of writing your own script or anything you can simply use the advantage of the devsec uh, devsec framework and you can simply write the compliance so the problem with the compliance and the problem with the devsec framework is it's not like a, we can follow directly uh, directly apply to the organization we according to the, our organization profiles we have to make some changes and we can like you can use the dependence keyword and include the uh, this one baseline and add some changes to that one yeah so these are the references that we can go we can go and check it out like uh, inspect a tutorial by chef and it's a there is something tutorial written by uh, the lady called ani she has she has done uh, like a good work you can start from zero and start learning from that and also um, that is something the uh, devsec uh, framework where you can go, go and look look at the github repository of them how do, how do they write the profiles how the people in the real world write the profiles how we can do that things so uh, we will go this one control not control hello world uh and try to do this task so uh, this is the task that i am going to give you we have to check whether this poll is this file is present or not and it it should be only owned by root we have to write the test for this one mm. you, you don't need to write in inside the profile you can just write uh, write this one uh, like we have created like all over right Okay, 
If anyone has any doubts so, or any help, please ask. I could not find that file. But I guess that's somewhere about my um, <clears throat> my user. That's probably why I'm not seeing it, right? <clears throat> or do I just create one? Yeah, I'll just create one. We have a question in chat from Rustam. Are there any <clears throat> open source projects that cover CSA, CCM, PCI, DSS, or CIS controls out there? Uh, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure about that one. That is fine. Yeah, so see DevSec, Yeah, DevSecIO. Yeah, DevSecIO, I think control CS, CSA, you could see DevSecIO has something with CSA benchmark. I think it should be, yeah, for Docker they have something CSA. You see CSA benchmark. I am not sure about the other profiles. Does anyone ask I'm able to do this? Uh, I haven't followed this part. Uh, can you tell me which, what am I doing? This one, uh, the task that I have to create. We have to check the EPC password by this present. And it should be one way root. We will take a couple of minutes, a couple of more minutes. And if anyone can able to do. So do you write two tests for this or just one test to no, one test is enough one test one test under the test you have to write two conditions. It has to be checked like a here it should be checked like this file should be present and it should be owned by the Oh. 
would this work at all? No. <laughs> no, it's not uh, like there. There are some options to check, like uh, file owners. Yeah. Okay. If you are not able to do, there is no issue. You can go home and learn stuff. Yeah, Dinar, I think we can end the session. Are you gonna show us how to do it? Yeah. I yeah, I'll show, I'll show. Um just give me a minute. Just give me a minute, I have to Google how to do Inspect. Yeah, I think it's a, mm. you are done pretty much right. I was close for a first try. Yeah, we, we have to do, we are checking like it's file everything or one guru. You just run inspect. Yeah, we go try. It. I think you are done, right? Yeah, the file should be PSD. I, I also forgot to show about the other thing. Like you can use format equal to JSON to uh, put the output in the JSON format. Uh, Reporters are done. Now we are get, getting just an output so that we can easily pass into the another machine and get the output. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all from my hand. I'll, can I stop sharing this thing? Yeah. Hello, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks everyone who attended my sessions. Uh, Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, do you have any questions? Mina says thank you. Rustam also says thank you. And I want to say thank you. It's It was really good. Yeah, thanks. It's my like uh, first, first chance on session on like, I'm begging. I hope everyone found useful. If you have any feedback or anything to improve, please let me know. If you if you want to chat anything more about this one or anything more about the cups, feel free to reach. I have put link. I I am available on the Slack. I'll also in the GitHub there are some links to my website so that you can reach out to me. Yeah, I also I want to thanks to uh, Dennis and Dennis for giving this opportunity and Didar for helping me to set, to set these things up and working this and also I want to thank for Mario 
so who help me so you are not that but you help me to review the content for my work and help me to complain and also i want to thank you for josh and uh, petera i am not sure on pronouncing his name correct for helping me to set out the setting up the lab for this session so thanks everyone i hope everyone found this one was useful thanks yeah thank you glasswall as well for helping with the uh, lab setup we couldn't have done it without you guys thank you everybody no worries have a great one cheers thanks bye